couple plus money winners on the show yesterday. Certainly didn't have to wait long for that Jamar Chase anytime touchdown bet to cash. We may curse the Cincinnati Bengals, however, for what they did uh, the rest of the game later on the show. But let's bring in Mark Zeno. We're going to talk a little Major League Baseball here on Tuesday. We got three plays for you. Great slate of games. Playoff implications all over the board, Mark. Uh, you're going to take us to the AL West to start things. Astros, Mariners, tremendous pitching matchup. You got Logan Gilbert on the mound for the M's, who won last night. And of course, Framber is the color of your energy on the mound for the Astros. Will He's been a guy that you've been backing in one form or another. I feel on the shows that you and I do together almost every time out. Are you back in Framber again here on Tuesday? Why not? Uh, they're 18 and 9 when he pitches on the year. Um, it's it's hard to deny how good they are. He also gets nearly five runs of support per game, and he's only got an ERA of three. So I carry the two. Yeah, that means they score a lot more than he gives up, and so that usually is a good formula for winning. Um, you know, look, the Mariners had a chance to clinch last night. They didn't get it done. Uh, gave out the play on the show. It was a client play as well, and uh, it didn't happen. Um, Hunter Brown and company, and I mean, listen, the, the Bryce Miller threw himself a damn gem, which was, you know, uh, unexpected to a certain extent, given how bad his numbers were on the road. But push all that aside, Logan Gilbert starts today for the Mariners, uh, and he's a guy who only gets 3.4 runs of support. The Astros are just 14 and 17 with him on the mound. And although he's very, very good, his ERA is a, over a run higher on the road than it is at home. I mean, look, the Astros are going to get this thing done eventually, because guess what? If they don't clinch today, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to play them again tomorrow until they clinch the damn thing because that's, you know, I'm going to ride this thing into the ground like a lawn dart. So uh, we hope it gets done tonight with Framber on the mound. Uh, although Framber has struggled a little bit against the Mariners this year, you feel like these are the moments where your best pitcher rises up and, and you know, puts his best stuff out there. And the Astros' bats won't stay silent for long. They were one hit by Bryce Miller last night until the end of the, you know, I think it was the seventh or eighth inning when they finally pushed another run across or pushed their first run across rather. So Astros bounce back. We get a short number here around minus 130, minus 135. Best starter for the team on the mound. Lineup should be able to uh, to push some runs across against Logan Gilbert. Framber is the color of our energy once again. Astros money line, my after the double play. Astros money line, full game. Smash that like button if you're rolling with Zinno. We now move from the AL West to the NL East. Big, big series down in your neck of the woods, Mark, in A-Town. The Braves hosting the Mets. Uh, NL wild card race. It's three teams, two spots. These are two of them, the Braves and the Mets, and you got the D-backs. The Braves right now, they are the odd team out. They currently trail the Mets by two games. And the D-backs by one and a half games. D-backs lost last night, of course. If you listen to the morning wager, uh, we gave out the Giants at a nice fat plus price. They got it done. So that was good. Uh, I'm taking the Braves here. Uh, I know, Mark, that uh, you kind of have a different opinion. But let me make the case for Atlanta. They've taken some early money. And we love Spencer Schwellenbach. I think he's the reason they've taken that early money. You go back to July 27th, he's allowed three earned runs or less in 10 consecutive starts. Now, there was one where he gave up six runs because of three unearned runs. Other than that, though, it's three runs or less every time out. Lone career appearance against the Mets was a great one. Uh, back on July 27th when this run started, Schwellenbach tossed seven shutout innings and finished with a career-high 11 Ks. I cannot stress how important this game and series are is to the Braves. I'm taking Atlanta. I think it's a spot where they you talk about stepping up. When you need to step up, I think the Braves step up and take tonight's series opener. So that's my half a double play to go along with Mark and the Astros. Let us know your favorite Major League Baseball bets down in the comments section below for Tuesday. And also... And I'll throw this question to you, Mark. Uh, I'd like the viewers to let us know who they think the odd team out in the NL wild card race is going to be between D backs, Braves, Braves, and Mets. Who do you think? I knew that was okay. Should we just move on? I knew well, you were going to say that. I mean, no, it's just, I mean, I've been telling people in Atlanta, like, guys, you don't want this team to make the playoffs. Like, just, just put the nail in the coffin, put it out of its misery. It cannot win the World Series. It cannot. So, I mean, if you'd like to play, two extra games in a three-game series to get eliminated, knock yourself out. It doesn't prove anything. Just just end it. 
there's no reason at this point in time for this team to try and, and, and be something it's not. And what it's not is a team that's good enough to make a, a deep playoff run. You know, I mean, that's that, it's just the reality. I mean, you, you talked about this game tonight. I love the first five under uh, because the Braves can't hit and they still can't hit and, and they haven't been able to hit all year. So when you're trotting out there, Gio Urshela and Whit Merrifield, <laughs> and I don't even know who is some Ronaldo, Ronaldo, Rosario, whatever his name. I don't know who the hell is playing in there anymore because I just stopped watching. Um, you know, it, that's been the problem all year long. So uh, I think there's a low scoring tight affair. Schwellenbach is really good. I don't necessarily disagree that Schwellenbach is the you know the right side from the standpoint of he's being the, he's the better pitcher here, but yeah, I mean the Braves just you know they needed to fade this thing out and just just pack it in and go golfing and we'll see you next spring when everybody's healthy. Yeah, yeah. Should mention Severino is that Luis Severino is on the mound for the Mets here. Uh, yeah, I it, I think with Schwellenbach it's not going to take many runs to win. It could be a first five under absolutely, but that is Mark Zinno playing Dr. Jack Kevorkian to the Atlanta Braves right there, just wanting to put them out of their misery. So uh, we shall see who the odd team out is in the NL playoff picture in the wild card. All right, a game that really does not have any playoff implications is the Blue Jays and the Red Sox. The I think the Red Sox are still technically alive after winning last night, but they're not making the playoffs. Stop it. Uh, Toronto is in last place in the division, but... There is a reason for enthusiasm at the ballpark today north of the border, Mark Zeno, because Bowden Francis, dare I say, the great Bowden Francis, is on the bump this evening. I said first five run line on the power five with Toronto. I was willing to lay the half a run. It was only around minus one. This line has curiously come down, though, and we're like, hey, screw laying the half a run. Let's keep the tie in our back pocket. Blue Jays, first five money line. Tell the people about that. I mean, if you haven't been following Bowden Francis uh, and his rise to where he's been, um, this is a guy that, since August 1st, has only allowed more than two runs in any start just once. He's failed to go at least six innings just once. Um, The guy's got a ton of strikeouts. Let me just do some quick math here. 52 strikeouts in 54 innings so far. I mean, look, he had at least five strikeouts in every outing except for one against the Mets his two two starts ago. He went eight innings, gave up one run on one hit, a solo home run, somehow only struck out one batter. Don't know how. Uh, And that was in the top of the ninth. Yes. That home run. Uh, It was the top of the ninth, that home run. He's got at least – that's right. He had a no-hitter three innings. And that was when Mm -hmm. the the Blue Jays lost that game. That's right. That was a crazy game that they lost. Um but nonetheless, I mean, he's been a strikeout machine uh, over the, most of his starts, getting at least 5K, sometimes going north of eight into double digits. The Red Sox are a team that's top 10 in strikeout rate on the road um, against uh, – uh, uh, just on the road in general. Sorry, I was going to say against lefties, but he's not a lefty. It's just a force of habit. Uh, but anyway, so this all sets up well here for Bowden Francis. First five, money line. Keep the tie in our back pockets in case the Toronto bats, which are absolute spit but with a different second letter. Um, <laughs> yeah, keep keep that in our back pocket in case we need it here. But we like the Blue Jays in a nothing, mean nothing game, but it means something about in Francis. So good enough for me to back him. And it should mean something to all of you. Yes, that is your yes. show best bet. Toronto Blue Jays, first five money line. Yeah, the Blue Jays, they didn't score until the bottom of the ninth last night. That sucked. I had the over seven and a half. Uh, in that game, obviously did not hit. The Red Sox were terrible with runners in scoring position as well. But here with Francis, Mark, I'll add this. He's allowed five hits or fewer in six of his last seven starts. Five hits. Hits. I'm not talking about just hits. There have been yes. uh, four times, four times in those seven starts, he's gone at least seven innings and allowed just one hit. Hello. Bowden Francis, everybody. We're back at him today. Uh, now, if you want our Mark and I's individual top plays for Tuesday, guess what? It's Since it's Tuesday at wagertalk.com, $5 plays across the board. I have already locked and loaded a $5 play for college football on Saturday. While I while my 6-0 and NFL run did come to an end last night, screw you Bengals for not being able to get that teaser home. They lose outright to the Commanders. Are you kidding me? But regardless, we're still number one in football this season. 68% combined in NFL and college. We did win our first 5% max bet of the year last Saturday. Texas Tech over Arizona State. I've got a 4% best bet for Saturday. 
already locked and loaded. The line moved on that Texas Tech game, Mark, prior to kickoff. I think the line's going to move on this game that I've got selected as well. So head on over to wt.buzz slash BP to get a 4% best bet for Saturday for just $5. Talk to me about what you have for your $5 play at your page. Well, after what I did to all of you last week for $5, um, I owe you an apology. Oh God. Probably $5. Probably $5. I, I, I have it around here somewhere. I have to look. I think I have the money somewhere. But uh, yeah, just uh, send me a Venmo and I'll, you know, maybe think about giving you your $5 back. Um, nonetheless, anyway, we digress. Uh, we will have a baseball play up for 4% baseball play for our $5 play today. So this way I don't have to make the pain last all week long uh, until Saturday. I could just get it over with all in one day. Uh, and Don't you guys could be it. less aggravated with me uh, about spending $5 on things that I have advised you to do um, that, well, you know, I mean, why take advice from me? I, I, I haven't, you know, I'm not worthy of giving anybody advice. Look at me. My, my, my life's a mess. Stop it. So Stop anyway, it. Uh, we will have a $5 baseball play, 4% play. Again, we've still been trending really well in August, in the month of baseball. We're up over 30 units since August 1st. So uh, we've been we've been handling it pretty well in baseball to this point. So. Let's keep it going. That play will be up on the site here shortly right after the show. I would also be remiss if I not mention the other special offer currently going on at wagertalk.com. If you buy a three-month all-access pass, we will throw in an additional fourth month of service free of charge. That is an instant $299 savings, guys. So you're getting 120 days worth of plays at less than $49 per week and $7 per day, just a massive savings. Again, head on over to either my page, wt.buzz slash bp, Mark's page, wt.buzz slash mz, and you can subscribe today. A very good idea to lock in long term. All right. I believe, Mr. Um, Zeno, that does it for the show on Tuesday. No, Although no, we are not, not done talking no, baseball no, because – Oh, wait a minute. Oh, oh, oh. What have I, what have I missed? I want you to just hold on a second. I'd like you to hang on, on just one – a little second here. Uh, number one, um, I would like to point out that uh, Circus Survivor. Have you? Uh, this is just insane what we've seen. Um, oh yes, yeah, yes, 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 yes. Survivor, Circus Survivor started with fourteen thousand two hundred and sixty-six total entries. They are down below two thousand after just three weeks. That's Over eighty-five percent of the pool is. Gone. The top four picks from this week, the Bengals, the Browns, the Bucks, and the Raiders, all losers. All of them. So it is just insane what has happened this year. The biggest dog every week has won outright. Has won outright so far. Um, just absolutely insane to see how this thing is going to go. I, I, I'd be shocked if anybody makes it to Thanksgiving at this rate. With that few left, <laughs> I mean, really. so much for that strategy of saving teams for the Thanksgiving right. week, right? Because they're right. going to be alive I mean, by then. Yeah, it, it's kind of insane. Like I, you just, you know, I, I had three entries. I lost one in week one. I lost the second in week two, and I lost the third in week three. Bam! Pull it to the head. Uh, I, done. Over with. So that part has been pretty insane to watch, to say the least. But if you are one of the two thousand under two thousand left in Circus Survivor, good luck, man. Uh, it's actually a really advantageous position because it's hard, um, you know, to have that many people eliminated. You've got a clear path going forward. Um, just avoid the uh, avoid the, the big favorite, obviously, and you might be okay. That said, uh, I'm breaking out my my tap shoes so I can tap dance all over your face and saying I told you so about the Cincinnati Bengals who will miss the playoffs. Yeah, we had yeah. the conversation. I told everybody. I told everybody on every network that would listen. The Bengals were bad. Bengals were going to miss the playoffs. That's right. I'm cool. Look at that outfit. Nobody wore it better. Um, beyond that, that, they were going to miss the playoffs. Not only that, they might finish last in their division. And uh, the the only thing I, you know, every now and then I do get one right. Of course, you guys didn't pay for that. So, so anyway, but nonetheless, um, yeah, Bengals are bad. That, that roster is bad. After you get through Chase, Burrow, and Hendrickson, the other 49 guys, they all suck. They're, 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 they're terrible. That's a bad team, and they're not going to win a lot this year. Not even Joe Burrow can save no. them. And Zach Taylor is a piss-poor coach. You can't be this unprepared for a bad <laughs> team. Like, you, re you, it, you really yeah. can't be this unprepared. They lost to New England in week one. They lost to New England. 
Yeah, they're, it, yes. it's not good. All right. I was, I, I was, you know, everyone just thought it was, I don't know, whatever. The Bengals pissed me off, obviously. Yes, they're not a good team. I still think they might finish ahead of the Browns in the AFC North because the, the Browns have a lot of issues right now. Trust me. I hear about that every single day, every hour pretty much here living in Cleveland. All right. I believe now that was a little football talk. Made for, oh, I, I do want to add this. Let's quantify what you just oh. said. Under, underdogs of six or more this year in the NFL have a winning straight up record and only one has failed to cover. That was new England last Thursday against the jets. That is incredible. It's a big part of the, you know, and I like those underdogs, you know, so that's why I've had some success. Of course, my one loss in the last two weeks was teasing a favorite through uh, down through seven and three. So I got what I deserve there, I guess, but we'll bounce back $5 plays my page, Mark's page, you know where to go. That'll do it. Mark and I were not done talking baseball today. Because we're on first pitch with Dan Alexander. Oh, and you're on Wait to Talk today, right? I'm all over this network today. Thankfully for you guys. So good luck to the rest of you. Until next time, let's catch some tickets.